Okay, so we redid this and we did um, a lot more uh, random draws. How many random draws did we do? Did we do 20,000? Um, so most of this stuff should not change. The only thing that really should change are our standard errors and our confidence intervals. Um, who has a standard error of 0 0.079 for your indirect effect? Does anyone have anything different? Of course. What do we have down there? Uh, minus 0 0.0078. 0 0.0078? Okay. Uh, I'll, we can go with that. Everybody else has 0 0.0079? All right, so we have one. We have one oddball. We could rerun this with a hundred thousand and see what happens. No, I don't want to do that either. All right, let's do something else, just real quick here, um, and and then I think we uh, I, I think we've had about enough for the for today. So let's go analyze regression linear. Oops, no, I'm sorry, not analyze regression linear. Analyze regression process and we have audit consumption here let's do one other thing though let's add urgency in what if we just what are we doing when we add urgency in We are adding a second mediator, and you don't have to do anything else. It will assume now, I'm just going to draw over this, that now we have M2 and M1, and it will do this. Process is smart that way. Yeah? And you don't have to change the model number? Uh, do not have to change the model number. This is still model number four. It would be more serial then you would have to change the model number, yes. Um, okay, we've got that in. Let's hit go and see what happens. All right, you can see that now it tells us that we have um, Y as audit problems, X is PBS tote, and we have two different mediators now. And it gives us PBS tote on uh, audit consumption, and that is a statistically significant association. Um, then we have PBS tote on urgency, and again, a statistically significant association. Um, we have PBS tote uh, predicting uh, audit problems, and it is not statistically significant as we've shown in the past. Then we have audit consumption and urgency both predicting uh, problems. And so we have these indirect effects. And if we look at our indirect effects for audit consumption, it is minus 0 0.0360, which is very similar to our last one. Why isn't it exact? Why isn't it identical to our last one? It's because there is some overlap between consumption and urgency, right? Um, we also see that uh, urgency is uh, significantly, whoop, uh-oh. There is a significant indirect effect between urgency or, um, and, and uh, 
through urgency, right? Sorry, not, not on urgency, through urgency, from X to Y via urgency. And we're not going to worry about the partially standardized versus completely standardized um, right now. This is the thing that we're mostly concerned with. Um, and so what does that tell us about uh, this, this um, analysis? Who wants to walk us through this? Oh, wait, wait, wait. There's one other thing there, isn't there? Now, in our last model, we had a total indirect effect. Let's jump up here. Oh, it, it doesn't actually give us total indirect effect. It just gives us the indirect effect. But this is the total indirect effect, right? That's all we had. But now we have two partial indirect effects, right? And a total indirect effect. And in the video, I talked about this, and I called it something specific. Anybody remember what I called it? I, I said that there's a rule that we use to figure out what the total indirect effect is when we have multiple indirect effects. What was that rule? Yes, and the rule is called, you just add them, and the rule is called what? Tracing, Tracing rule. Yep. Um, if you add these two together, you get minus 0 0.0427. That is your total indirect effect. Who wants to, to describe this total indirect effect for us? Who wants to describe this model? using the language that I used um, when I described this for you a few minutes ago. Who wants to describe this, Ashley? Oh, I meant you could call on somebody, not that you had to. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, go ahead. Give it a shot, Ashley. Let's let's hear what you got. So, walk through the whole model. Okay. Here's what we did. We analyzed it in this. Okay. This was specified as this. This is that, and the other. We tested the mediation of the relationship between. So we tested the mediation of the relationship between. Alcohol problems. Alcohol problems. And. And. Uh, consumption. Nope. I would say be between alcohol problems and PBS. Oh, alcohol problems and PBS. Via. Yep, perfect. Um, using process version 3.3. Yep. Uh, and we sampled uh, say five thousand strokes. Yep. I would say something like standard errors were calculated using five thousand bootstrap. Okay. Uh, random draws or 5,000 bootstrap samples, right? Okay, good. Keep going. You're doing great. And that's where we, and then from there, we started talking about the um, You, I, I would actually, spec, I would talk about the paths first, okay. right? You're going to have an A1 path, an A2 path, a B1 path, a B2 path. You could say that, or you could just like name them. You could say the relationship between PBS and <coughs> consumption was. Okay, so the relationship between PBS and consumption was, um, and then you say, you say that if we 
No, nope, we're not at IND yet. Right. We're just talking about that that path, oh. that that one path. Okay, so the path between um, where we're doing is it here? Is the is X or Y? PBS is X. Okay, so but we're, we're like I would I'll I'll just interject I'll yeah. say um, the relationship between um, PBS mm -hmm. and alcohol consumption was negative and statistically significant. Oh, okay. Right. The relationship between PBS and urgency was also negative and statistically significant. Where is that at, though? There it is. Yep. PBS and urgency was negative and statistically significant. And then I would say both consumption and urgency were positively associated with alcohol problems and statistically significant. And you could list those slopes if you wanted. Um, and the path between PBS and the direct path between PBS and alcohol problems was not statistically significant, indicating full mediation, right? The specific indirect effect from PBS to alcohol problems via, um, Consumption was, where is that at? Minus 0 0.04, and then list your 95% confidence intervals. The specific indirect, uh, in, indirect association between um, PBS and alcohol problems via urgency was minus 0 0.0067 and list your confidence intervals there. The total indirect effect from PBS to alcohol problems via the two mediators was minus 0 0.0427 and list your confidence intervals there. And you might finish by saying the final model is depicted in figure one, right? So what you are essentially uh, laying out here is, here's the basic model, here are all of the individual paths, right? A1, A2, B1, B2, C, C prime, whatever. Um, here are the two simple indirect effects. Uh, if you have multiple indirect effects, then you call them, sim the, then each one is, is a piece of the total indirect effect. Right? So I would call it either a simple indirect effect or a specific indirect effect. And you'll hear people refer to those kind of interchangeably. Um, and then after you've listed out your indirect effects, you can say the total indirect effect is blah. Sometimes you will have a positive indirect effect and a negative indirect effect, and your total effect becomes zero, right? And that's a special case of, of mediation. Um, and, and, and we think of this special case of mediation as something often called like suppressed mediation or mediation suppression, right? Um, where you have these two um, competing mediated effects. Um, and so sometimes when you find no relationship between X and Y, um, it's because there are competing mediated effects. Um, I don't have data for that, so we're just gonna we're gonna roll with what we've got. But that's how I would describe this, right? Um, we're gonna we're gonna describe it in as much detail as possible. Let's do let's do another model. Um, let's uh, any questions over that? Does that make sense to everybody? Who's who's lost right now? All right, cool. Let's do another model. Let's go analyze regression process. Uh, let's plug, actually let's leave consumption in there 
And instead of PBS, let's do PBS harm specifically. And let's hit OK. And let it run for a little bit, because that's what process does. Who likes this, by the way? Just out of curiosity, who likes the process macro? Everybody, right? This is why I don't like to teach it, because it becomes so <laughs> such an easy thing to do, um, and also an easy easy way to make mistakes, right? Um, but if if you if you're conscientious and you pay close attention, it can save you an awful lot of time. Um, next week, we're going to go through. Um, moderated mediation and so I will uh, I would encourage you guys actually to play around with this a little bit this week um, play around with with making a, um, uh, an interaction effect and see what it looks like and, and uh, next week we'll actually do uh, moderated mediation in in class and so you'll actually get to do interactions in the context of mediation but all right um, here's our model right here uh, so we see something is occurring right off the bat here, right? And that is that, whoops, did it jump on me? It jumped on me. Um, this is PBS predicting consumption, and what do we see? This is PBS harm. This is a specific type of PBS. It doesn't predict consumption. If it doesn't predict consumption, we don't have to go any further. What do we know from that? We will not have a significant indirect effect, right? It's not going through that variable. So let's scroll down. Let's see what else is going on here. Um, we see the same thing here in the full model, audit problems. We see PBS is kind of inversely associated here, right? Um, and consumption is predicting audit problems. Uh, so we're definitely not going to have a mediated effect. And as we scroll down here, we see that our mediated effects, while it's negative, um, our, whoops, our confidence intervals do include zero. So not only does PBS harm not predict use, it doesn't predict problems either. And in fact, if we looked at this bivariately, PBS harm would predict problems um, in a bivariate model, but it doesn't after controlling for alcohol consumption. And that is because of something that we talked about way, way back when. What was the thing that we talked about way, way, way back when? There is an issue of multicollinearity here, right? Yeah. So this is not an issue of mediation. It's an, an issue of overlapping variance. Where we don't have true mediation, um, we just have associations that if we ran this in the Barron and Kenny method, we would find something a little bit different, right? Let's go audit problems. Let's move this out. Move this out. Um, PBS harm. Put that in. Run this regression model. And we would actually get a significant effect between PBS harm and audit problems. And then if we go analyze regression linear and we add consumption in, and we run that, we would initially conclude that we had mediation because we had a significant effect and then that significant effect disappears in the, in the model, in the step four model, but it's not a true, uh, it, it's not a true mediated effect, right? Um, yeah, 
it's it's a it's a multicollinearity issue. So oh, this is one of the benefits of using process and or uh, using some sort of way to account for um, multicollinearity rather than uh, a simple Baron, Baron and Kenny method. So. Yeah? So if you, if you would have some of these uh, digitism and you use the, the Kenny model, would that have to suffice? Would centering make any, any difference here? I'm sorry, say that again. Somebody said something. It's not an interaction. Yeah, there's no interaction. So it actually wouldn't affect multicollinearity. Um, none of the slope coefficients would change if you centered it. Only one thing would change. What would change? Yep, intercepts. Intercepts would change, but all of our covariances would remain exactly the same. So no, centering wouldn't wouldn't change uh, anything in this in this instance. Um, all right. Any questions, comments, concerns? Yes. Not about this so much, but is, uh, can we expect the final exam to be like the midterm exam? Because technically it's scheduled for next week, but we're doing mediation next week. Is it scheduled for next week? Ooh. Um, <laughs> am I off a week? Is that why? Because uh, last day of classes is actually the 22nd, right? Um, I'm pretty sure the 22nd, which is Tuesday, which means we won't have class that week. Right. Um, yeah, so there will be there will be homework um, next week, and then the midterm will be posted on the on the 22nd, basically. Okay. And you guys will have that week and a half to do the midterm. It will be um, the final. The final. I'm sorry, yeah. will not be as intense as the midterm was. Just <laughs> FYI. Uh, it will only be basically question six, um, so there won't be all of the short answers and stuff. It's just going to be a moderated mediation problem that you guys will have to work through. It's still a lot of work. When you think about the midterm, uh, what did you spend the most time on? I, I have to guess it was question six, um, and so question six is what we will be doing uh, for the final, but it will only be question one. There's two homework assignments left, one this week, one next week, right? Um, there is a homework assignment that was th that I gave you guys until Sunday to finish because I got it posted so late. It's actually fairly simple. Um, it's uh, outlier detection, so it's looking at leverage, um, influence, and Mahalanova, using Mahalanova systems for multivariate outliers. Um, you'll have to do outlier detection um, for the, the final as well as a moderated mediation model. Um, and so next week when we go through moderated mediation, um, it's really bringing everything that we've been doing um, for the whole semester together, right? Because you're going to have a mediation model and you're going to have an interaction. And so you're going to have to plot that interaction at plus and minus one standard deviation. And then you will get to calculate indirect effects at one standard deviation above, one standard deviation below, and at mean levels. So you'll have uh, kind of a, a cool final test. And um, to put your mind at ease for the final, I will not ask you to do something that you haven't already done <laughs> in class. So um, by the way, if, uh, if, if so every, I believe everybody's um, midterm has been great. I'm sorry, it, it takes me a while to work through those, right? It's, it's, it's a lot. Um, everyone's midterms should be graded now. Um, some of you have uh, corrections that if you get back to me, I will um, make sure that you get those uh, points bad, added back in. Um, other than that, yeah, sir. Could you also clarify the expectations for the final paper? Oh, yeah. Um, I will, I'm going to stop this recording since we're not talking about anything. Um, as far as the final paper goes,